Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast with Phil Graham. We help you master Facebook ads and give you an unfair advantage over your competition. Are you ready? Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast, episode 358. I'm Phil Graham, and today I'm going to be sharing six expert tips that could slash your Facebook ad costs and improve your effectiveness. You might be spending too much money on ads. What if you could actually get better results for the same or even less money? While it's never guaranteed, there are some things that we've discovered that can sometimes help in a really big way. This is not a fake guru thing. Nobody can guarantee anything. But what I'm gonna share today comes from years of running ads and seeing data and not only that, also some of this comes from Facebook themselves directly. So I'm really excited to share this stuff with you guys today. I'm going to focus on six key things that you can do and test that could really help you like they've certainly helped us. So I'm glad you guys are here. I wanted to just mention, I get a lot of comments from people saying that they really enjoy the format of the podcast where I try and keep it really short and actionable. And I'm really doing this for you guys. I do record this every single week. I don't want you to think I batch record 50 at a time. When you're listening to this, you're getting like relevant, up-to-date information. It's been like that for seven years. and It will continue to be like that every single week. So I am glad you're here. I hope you guys had a great weekend and a great week so far. We did. We did all kinds of stuff. Went to Costco, did some stock research. Not everybody knows this, but I really love investing. And I always recommend also to entrepreneurs and business owners and really to everybody to not only run a business, but when you can invest in some stocks or real estate or both. I'm really passionate about that stuff and I enjoy doing that. So I did some stock research and put in some buy orders and stuff like that. So it was a really fun weekend. So before jumping into the content real quick, if you guys are looking for some help, on how to run ads effectively. I believe coaching is the best way in the world to learn it one-on-one, -on -one, not in a group, one-on-one. -on -one. So whether you're looking for something like that, or maybe you don't wanna learn, you just want somebody to run your ads for you, for either one of those things, you can go to my website, philgramdigital.com, or you can DM me on Instagram, at philgramdigital, and I would love to connect with you. Also, we update the website, philgramdigital.com slash podcast every single week with the new episode. Not only can you, of course, listen to it there or on your podcast player that you choose, but we've got show notes there and it's really cool. So feel free to check that out as well. All right, let's jump right in, my friends. And again, disclaimer, I am not a fake guru. I'm the first to tell you that none of this is guaranteed. Nothing is. In fact, if somebody tells you it is, run the other way. However, we've seen a lot of success with these things that I'm going to teach today. And like I said earlier, some of this stuff comes directly from Facebook saying it could lower your ad costs. So that's a pretty good source as well. So let's dive into the six tips that I recommend. Number one, this is really important because I think hardly anybody does this and it makes such a big difference. Number one is you really need to learn something from almost every ad that you run. That really means that you need to have a strategy when you're running ads. You need to be good at data evaluation and you're not just randomly running ads. You know, most people just randomly launch their ads. If it doesn't work, they turn it off. If it does work, they put some more money on it and hope it keeps working. That is not a good recipe for success. If something doesn't work, you have to find out why. There is a reason. It might be the audience, it might be the creative, it might be the price, it could be the hook, it could be the landing page, it could be many different things. But if you don't find out, then you're gonna have a tough time. And even when something does work, you also need to find out why as well because all of your future ad decisions are gonna be based off of what you learn from each ad you run. So don't be like most people and just randomly run stuff and turn things on and off and not really know what they're doing. I mean, I've seen people who spend tens of thousands a day on ads who do this. 
And some of those people are like flushing money down the toilet. Others are doing decent, but they are probably doing a tiny percentage of what they could be doing if they were doing it right. So make sure that you learn something from each ad you run. And to do that, you have to do testing. If an ad doesn't work, it's not like you automatically know why it didn't work. You have to do a little testing to find out, but you can always figure that out with enough testing. So that's number one, learn something from every ad you run, because doing this can help you make better decisions for your next ad and your next ad ongoing. And that could help you get better results and possibly even lower your costs as well. We've even had scenarios where we were testing to try and get a lower CPM, which really is the cost of running ads. And there's different things that we were able to do to lower the CPM that we figured out by testing. So whether it's trying to get a lower CPM or a lower cost per action or both, you got to learn why it didn't work or why it did work. Okay, number two, this is also a big one, my friends. Stop turning your ads off too fast. So many people do this. It's crazy. Unless you have a really, really large budget, you typically need to let your ads run for at least a little while, at least a week, maybe two weeks. There are variables and it does depend on different factors. So I can't tell you for you exactly what that would be without knowing you and going in your account. But in general, I do see that people turn things off way too fast, way more often than they leave them on too long. So make sure that you're not turning something off too quickly. You know, don't launch an ad and then turn it off two days later when you have a five or $10 budget and it didn't even really get a chance to go to hardly any people yet. Make sure you let them run because if you turn it off too fast, then you don't know if it worked or not. So what did you spend your money for? You didn't learn anything from that. Try and learn something from every ad you run and don't turn them off too fast. Tip number three is I recommend stop watering your budget down and really consolidate your ads and campaigns into just a few things. Now, there's a lot of variables to this one. There are situations where I'll do it different and I will run a bunch of different things. But in general, I see a lot of people running too many little things. Let's say you had a $50 a day budget overall and you're running $5 a day ad sets and you're running like 10 of them. I would not do that. I would be doing maybe two at 25 each, maybe even one at 50 or one at 30 and one at 20. But I wouldn't be spreading your budget way too thin. I would consolidate that into fewer campaigns. So that really concentrates your budget it helps you get through the learning phase quicker and helps you know quicker whether something didn't work or whether it did work. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't test lots of things. If you do have, let's say, $50 a day or $20 a day and you're running one or two things, then run it for a week or two and then you could turn it off and test something different. Or maybe you keep it on and it's doing well so you can add some budget. So we definitely test many different things, but I don't want to see people watering their budgets down too much. And again, there are certain circumstances where we do that for very specific reasons. It does depend, but in general, I would really be careful with that. We see good results when we try and have larger budgets, not meaning like a huge budget, but whatever we have to work with, we have larger ad set budgets and we do less ad sets and less ads. And again, if you want to test 10 different things and you've got enough budget for two kind of large ads, then just do two at a time. And then in a couple of weeks, do another two. And then do another two because you need to keep testing, but don't water it down when you're doing so. Okay, number four is about targeting and audiences. I highly recommend you test broad audiences versus segmented audiences. Many times we're doing both at the same time with different campaigns and ad sets and ads, but I'm here to say that one is not always better than the other. That's why it's so important to test. I've heard a lot of people say that broad is the best, that Advantage Plus is always the best. Well, guess what? It can be good, but I've also got data showing that it's definitely not always the best. I've got data showing that 
interest or behavior audiences sometimes work two or three times better or even more. And then I've also got data that shows big Advantage Plus audiences sometimes work two or three times better. So the main thing is a big, broad audience doesn't always work better. Even if the averages say it typically is better, that doesn't mean it's better for you. So that's why it's important to test. The good news is you don't have to guess and you don't have to assume. You can test both. I always recommend testing a broad audience along with a segmented audience. And then if it doesn't work, you try a different one and a different one until you find a good combination. And depending on your situation, I would recommend like a large audience if you can, like one to four or five million people, somewhere around there. And you could split test that against a much smaller segmented audience. And then you can match your copy to the segmented audience. And that's a really good test. But be careful. Sometimes broad works better. Sometimes segmented works better. Don't fall into that trap of just thinking you should only do one. You should absolutely be testing both. Number five, I definitely recommend that you guys typically use Advantage Plus placements. On this, we're not talking about audience. We're talking about placements. So where your ads are going to go. So you could manually choose the placements and just say only Facebook or only Instagram or only stories. But if you choose Advantage Plus placements, Facebook can try and find the most cost efficient options where they'll show your ads to try and get the best results for the lowest cost. And that doesn't mean that they're always right. So sometimes we will do like manual placements to test against it. And sometimes we can beat it. But in general, if you had a gun to my head and said, which one would you go with, Advantage Plus placements or manual, I would definitely choose Advantage Plus for the placements. It seems to have gotten us better results and sometimes at a lower cost. So I definitely recommend you guys do that. And then last but not least, number six, I highly recommend that you guys leverage video ads and make sure that you make them mobile friendly. This has definitely done really well for us. And sometimes images do work better. Again, that's why I'm such a believer in testing and data. So there are many situations where images crush it more than video, but more often than not, we see video working better and giving us a fair, favorable cost and many times a favorable cost per acquisition compared to images or carousel. So again, we do test both and sometimes one works better than the other. But if I could only pick one without a doubt, it would be video and I would make sure it's mobile friendly. I would also make sure that you're using vertical videos and you could really either record two different videos, one square and one vertical, or you could do it all in one and just use the magic of editing to do two different ones. But you definitely wanna make sure you have a vertical one for sure for mobile and I would definitely keep these videos less than 60 seconds. Somewhere between like 15 and 45 seconds is like the ideal sweet spot. So keep them short. Have an immediate hook. When you're doing a video ad, you need a hook right away in the first two to three seconds. If you don't do that, it's probably not going to work very well. And then lastly, definitely make sure you are using captions. Because a lot of people watch video without the sound. So make sure you have captions on there. So my friends, these six things have worked really well for us and others. And I definitely recommend you guys test them out for yourself as well. They could make a really big difference in your business. Episode 358 is in the books. Thank you guys so much for being here. Again, if you want to get in touch, my website is philgramdigital.com or you can DM me on Instagram at philgramdigital. And I will talk to you on next week's episode. Peace out. Thanks for listening to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast. Please remember to subscribe and share this with all your friends. For show notes, more tips, and to learn more about Phil, please visit philgramdigital.com slash podcast.